question two in the VCAR 2018 exam, and this is worth nine marks, so a reasonably um, marked question. Hydrogen peroxide is an aqueous solution at room temperature, decomposes slowly and irreversibly to form water um, and oxygen gas. According to this reaction, it is a exothermic reaction. What effect will increase in the temperature have on the rate of CO, sorry, of oxygen production? Use collision theory to support your answer. So rate, this is where we always need to go with collision theory. Um, it's not a Le Chatelier question. Um, it is a simple collision theory. So increase temperature will increase the rate. That's guaranteed of reaction. All right, so that's my first dot point. It's worth three marks. Again, I'm going to go with three dot points here and to try and get those. Now, the increase in temperature has a twofold effect. First of all, um, it increases the speed of the um, molecules, molecules, um, thus increases the frequency, frequency of collisions. That's your first point um, in that area. But also you need to understand that it's increasing the energy that these things have, so therefore we're overcoming the activation energy. So what it does is it increases the proportion, this word proportion is really important in this area when you're talking about temperature, increases the proportion of um, particles with the required activation energy, EA. I'll go activation energy, thus increases, again, the proportion of successful collisions. So that's where my three points are there. We've got one here, I've got one here, I've got one here highlighting that what does happen, what effect it happens, and I've used collision theory um, and the twofold explanation for collision theory, both um, the speed of the molecules banging in together more often and the proportion that actually will be successful, so having the required activation energy there. Next question. When a lump of, when a small lump of magnesium dioxide is added to the solution, the rate of CO2 produced increases, but when powdered MO2 is added, the rate greatly increases, and MO2 is recovered at the end. So having it recovered at the end means it's not participating in the reaction. Chances are it's a catalyst. So state the function, so therefore it's going to be, it is a catalyst for the reaction, for the reaction. Um, if it's not recovered at the end, it wouldn't be a catalyst, it would simply be more reactant. Um, but this idea of it speeding up the rate of reaction and also being there at the end of it um, must be a catalyst for our reaction. Part C. A solution of that is labelled 10 volume because one litre of this solution produces 10 litres of O2 gas at SLC. Um, calculate the concentration of H2O2 in the 10 volume in grams per litre when this solution is first prepared. Okay, so what do we need to know here? Obviously, um, we need to know the grams of my hydrogen peroxide. What information do I know? I know I've got a litre of aqueous solution, but I've also got 10 litres of oxygen gas. So my number of moles of O2 um, gas is going to be equal to my V divided by my VM, which is obviously standard laboratory conditions. I can use that. Otherwise, I'd have to use PV equals NRT. But 10 divided by 24.8 is going to be equal to... Um, let me turn this on. 10 divided by 24.8 gives me 0 0.403 mole of oxygen gas. From knowing this, I can then look at my ratio. So it's a ratio of 1 to 2. So therefore, my number of moles of H2O2 is going to be 2 times 0 0.0403. So I get that, and I times that by 2, and I'm going to get 0 0.806. 
Um, now that's coming from one liter of this. So I need to get my solution in grams per liter. So I need to get my mass of H2O2 equals number of moles times molar mass. 0 0.806 times by my molar mass of this. Now it is H2O2, so it is 2 plus 32 is 34. Um, 2 coming from 2 hydrogens, 32 from 2 oxygens. Should be able to work that out without a calculator. Times 34 gives me 27.42 grams. And that is per litre, because I know that 1 litre of this solution produced my 10 grams. 10 litres, so that's per litre of my solution, which is good. I do need to go back and look at sig figs. I've got um, three sig figs here, two sig figs here, so therefore I'm going to go to 27.4 grams per litre in my final answer there. Um, and that's going to be good. Moving on to part D. Part D. Propose a method to determine how quickly a solution of H2O2 decomposes when stored at a particular temperature. So I need a method, step-by-step -step method, for looking at how quickly, so I'm looking at rate of reaction. To do that, I need to look at what I can measure and understanding in here. I can measure how much oxygen is produced, or if a gas is produced, I can actually measure um, mass loss. I'm gonna go with oxygen produced. So. Um, how quickly means a rate, so that means about time. So how quickly I need to have some measurement of time within my answer. So let's have a look at this. I'm going to start off with, I could um, use a gas um, syringe. Um, probably use a gas syringe to collect my oxygen. I think that would be a reasonable thing to do. Okay, so if I do that, I would be gas syringe um, to collect the O2 gas. Now start off with that. I would like to do that and I would like to measure, because it has to be rate, it has to be about time, measure how much O2 is formed over a period of time. Um, so how quickly it will decompose. That's only two marks. So let's start off with what I would have to do before this. I would probably want to measure out, measure out a known amount of H2O2 to start off with. So if I measure out how much I have initially, I would have a starting point, I would then use my gas syringe to collect my O2, and I would measure how much O2 is formed over a period of time. I think the key point in here is understanding that it's measuring rates, so therefore there needs to be, have to be something to do with time in there. So rather than just um, doing collecting it, I'd need to work out how much I collect over a period of time. And that, I think, is part D done.